we will discuss a stress field around an edge dislocation. So let us first fix the geometry. So our edge dislocation is lying along the Z axis of the coordinate system, which is normal to this plane of the paper. The X and Y axes or the X1 and X2 axes are in the plane of the paper and the dislocation is going normal to the plane of the paper. So that's the dislocation line. That's the standard symbol for a positive dislocation line shown in the red here. Mm, the vertical part of the mm, symbol shows the extra half plane. So extra half plane is along the Y axis. And uh, the horizontal part of it shows the slip plane. So that's the horizontal part of the symbol. The Burgess vector of this dislocation line is to the right if we take the T vector going in and follow our right hand finish to start convention. RHFS convention gives with T vector going in, the B vector will be to the right. Now, in principle, we can derive the stress field around this dislocation just like in the other video we had done it for screw dislocation using the standard um, procedure or practice of elastic theory. That is, we first write the displacement field and then differentiate the displacement field to get the strain field. Then using the elasticity theory for correlation of strain field to stress field, we can write the stress field. So although the principle is the same, However, it turns out that the, Ill, the displacement field of an edge dislocation is far too complicated than that of a screw dislocation. So, although in principle it's the same procedure, in practice it becomes mathematically much, much more involved. So, what we are going to do here is to simply take the derived equations. We will not derive the equations, we will just Take them as standard equations from the literature. So the stress field sigma 1 1 you can see the expression itself is much more complicated than what we have derived for a screw dislocation and we use the standard symbols mu is the shear modulus mu is the shear modulus B is the magnitude of the Burgess vector shown here. Nu is the Poisson ratio. Is the Poisson ratio. And x1 and x2 are the two coordinates. So you can see this has a much, much more involved expression. But you can also see that sigma 1 1 that is the tensile stress in the x direction that is if I take a volume element here it's the tensile stress in the x direction so is this the stress we are talking about this is sigma 1 1 so it depends only on the x and y coordinate does not depend upon the z coordinate so it is independent of the z coordinate. So stress and strain field around a uh, edge dislocation is what we call a plane stress situation. The situation of plane stress. There is no dependence in the third direction and the components related to the third directions are also zero as we will now see. So sigma 2 2 is the other direction in the y direction so it's the tensile stress in this direction again a function only of x1 and x2 and of course the shear modulus Burgess vector and the Poisson ratio. Sigma 3 3 since it is a plane stress situation sigma 3 3 is not independent of sigma 1 1 and 2 2 but it is simply new times the product of new times the sum of sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2. So if you just add these two and multiply by nu, 
you get the expression for sigma 3 3 which again is independent of the z coordinate then when we look at the 1 2 stress this is the shear stress and this shear stress is acting on so 1 2 is on the plane 1 in the direction 2 so we are talking of this shear stress and correspondingly 1 2 mean also means 2 1 so it will be this one this will also be sigma 2 1 so this is also again dependent only on x y coordinate and has this form the components involving 3 sigma 1 3 and sigma 2 3 these shear stresses are 0 as it should be in the plane stress condition uh, one can get a feel for these stress component if one tries to uh, make a sketch so let us try to make a sketch just focusing mainly on the sign of these components so we have written these components and on the right i have made a sketch again and here i will draw the components these components here for this it is useful if we divide the space into eight sectors by drawing these 45 degree lines as well so now i have eight sectors and on in these eight sectors the sign of these components all remain the same so let us first look at this sector let us look at these first of all along these lines what will happen along these lines so along the x axis along the horizontal line x2 will be 0 and you can see that both in sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 you have the this x2 component here so as soon as x2 is 0 and, and in sigma 3 3 as well so all these three tensile stress components will be zero along this line. So we can write that sigma one one is equal to sigma two two is equal to sigma three three. All these components are zero along the x axis. If you look at the y axis, here x one is zero, and you see that sigma one two has this x one component as a multiplying factor so along this vertical line along the y-axis passing through the dislocation line sigma 1 2 will be 0 along this line sigma 1 2 is 0 then why I have drawn these uh, 45 degree lines because you can see that in sigma 2 2 and sigma 1 2 we have a factor x1 square minus x2 square x1 square minus x2 square along these lines as you know x1 is equal to x2 along this line and x1 equal to minus x2 along this line so this factor x1 square minus x2 square will always be 0 along both these 45 degree lines so here we will have sigma 2 2 is equal to sigma 1 2 0 and similarly here also sigma 2 2 is equal to sigma 1 2 is equal to 0 so these are the properties of these lines so any point along these lines will have these components of stresses 0 but what about the other other points in this space so for that let me take a volume here and try to look at the sign of sigma 1 1 sigma 1 1 is the stress perpendicular to these faces and along this horizontal line parallel to the x-axis we can see here that this entire expression involving x1 and x2 
in this region will be positive. These are the squared terms. So these will always be positive multiplied by x2 which is the y-axis which is always positive in the upper half of this drawing. So x2 is also positive and mu b and nu these are positive terms. So this negative sign makes the stress compressive. So I will draw it as a compressive stress. So it, draw, it can be drawn as a compressive stress here. This negative sign is what makes it compressive. If you now look at the 2, 2 component, in the 2, 2 component, we have x1 square minus x2 square. So this can either be positive or negative. But x1 square, because I am below this 45 degree line in this the x coordinate is always higher than the y coordinate because along this line x and y are equal as soon as i come down below that line the y component is decreasing so here x1 is more than x2 since x1 is more than x2 this factor is positive x2 is positive and we have a positive sign here so that means the y component is a tensile stress. So I can draw this as a tensile stress. Now, mm, now let us look at the shear stress component. We will not draw the sigma 3,3 which is going into the plane we will draw the shear stress sigma 1 2 and sigma 2 1 again if you see x1 is positive x1 for the same argument which we gave here for sigma 2 2 x1 is square minus x2 is square will also be positive so this shear stress is a positive shear stress so on the plane 1 on the positive side of the plane 1 it will act in the positive side, positive direction of the second axis. So the shear stress component will be shown like this on this volume. So similar exercise if you do, you can see what is the mm, stress field in all these eight sectors. You can uh, stop the video here and try to draw, make your own drawing and then compare with the final answer which I will show you. So here is the final answer for you to compare. You can see the intuitive feeling which we gave uh, in a previous introductory video that the stress field, uh, the stress field above the slip plane, this is the slip plane, the stress field above the slip plane is compressive and a stress field below the slip plane is tensile. When we talk about that, actually we are talking about the 1-1 one, one component. And if you look at the 1-1 one, one component, the horizontal component, everywhere above the slip plane, it's compressive shown in the green arrow. But everywhere below the slip plane, it is tensile shown in the red arrows. So, however, if you look at the vertical component, so that's both tensile and compressive even above the slip plane and it changes sign depending on which side of these 45 degree line they are there. So if they are closer to the half plane then they are also compressive. The vertical component is also compressive but if it is away from the half plane and towards the slip plane they start becoming tensile. Also the dislocation plane the half plane uh, acts like a mirror plane. So the stress state here and stress state here are mirror images of each other. Thank you.